This is Peter's rock agama, a lizard that is found all across West Africa. The female agamas are a bit dull, but the males are striking, with a fancy orange-red head and tail. But we're not in Sierra Leone right now. We're not in Cameroon, nor Ghana, nor the Congo. These lizards and I are nowhere near Africa. You sure you want some panda e? Some sugar chicken? Instead, we're in Florida, specifically on the University of Miami campus. How is it that a West African lizard came to be on an American college campus? And why might that be bad news for Floridians of both the reptilian and human varieties? Let's find some invasive species and find out. So I'm here in New York City Central Park by Turtle Pond. Well, most of these turtles shouldn't be here. They're the wrong kind of turtles. Most of the turtles here are red-eared sliders, which are native to the Mississippi River and Gulf of Mexico, not New York. They're popular pets, the most traded pet turtle in the world, but they can live to be up to 50 years old. So pet owners, tired of taking care of them, often dump them outside. So these invasive turtles are causing major problems for the native ones. They outcompete them for food, for basking sites, which is important if you're cold-blooded. But our problems here in New York pale in comparison to those of Southern Florida, an invasive reptile hotspot that I recently got the chance to visit. Florida may very well have the most invasive reptiles of any place on the planet. There are three non-native lizards running around for every true Florida native. Some are well known because of how successfully they have spread in their new Florida home. The earliest report of an invasive reptile here in Florida I could find was in 1887, when Brown and Knowles hitched a ride from Cuba on ships. Other well-known invaders include Burmese pythons, originally from Southeast Asia, green iguanas and tegus from South America, tegus, 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 and yes, our buddy the red ear slider. So for a variety of reasons, all of these species have gotten a toehold in Florida, outcompeting the native species that can't deal with the sudden competition and devastating prey species that didn't evolve with the threat they pose. So what makes Southern Florida such a good invasion site? Partially it's because that Southern Florida has a tropical climate and there's just more reptile species that live in the tropics. There's more species that feel at home in Southern Florida compared to New York City, say. But as far as invasive species are concerned, tropical regions may be more resistant to invasion compared to temperate regions. The general idea is that ecological communities in tropical regions are more biodiverse with greater species richness and also stronger evolved interactions between the species. Tropical communities are efficiently using all the nutrients available to them, so a newcomer will have a harder time finding a toehold. Florida is a bit weird though, since it's almost like a tropical island surrounded by ocean and non-tropical land towards the north. Because of that, Florida has fewer species than other tropical places, which may have made it more vulnerable to invasive species. So if the climate alone doesn't explain why Florida has so many invasive reptile species, what are some other reasons? It might be because Florida is a world leader in the reptile trade. A lot of these invasive species, like the red ear slider we saw in New York, started out as pets. Florida also has major ports of entry for reptile import and tons of pet stores and breeders. I counted up the reptiles for sale on a major reptile trading site and found that 20% of the reptiles for sale in the US were from Florida. Normal people go on vacation to Miami to see South Beach or Calle Ocho, but I'm not a normal person. I have two goals for this trip. Lizards. Number one, find some invasive lizards. Number two, eat a medianocious sandwich. I wanted to see two in particular, Peter's Rockagama and Green Iguanas. I wanted to see Peter's Rockagama because they're just real cool looking fancy boys. Peter's Rockagama hails from West Africa and they came over to the US via the pet trade starting in the 70s. The worrisome thing about these guys is their appetite. They're carnivorous, and people are particularly worried about them eating the critically endangered Miami blue butterfly. I only had one day in Miami, but with the help of citizen science sites like EdMaps and iNaturalist to plan my reconnaissance, I found agamas real fast. One of the spots with the most agama sightings around was on the University of Miami campus. But over in Little Havana, a few blocks from the popular tourist destination of Versailles, where I was walking to get a media noche sandwich, <laughs> There were an absolute ton of the West African agamas in a cemetery, sunning themselves on the gravestones. So I saw a ton of small lizards during my day in Miami. They were essentially everywhere you looked. But the one I really wanted to see was the big boy, an iguana. The big, majestic, dragon-looking guys are native to Central and South America and some Caribbean islands, and they can be longer than I am tall. 
some random forum post online said that they could be found along canal banks. So I, I headed there and I immediately found a group plus more as I walked along the canal. Ooh, wow. Wow. Look at that. Florida's just a wild place. an excellent herpetological luck today. So iguanas first showed up in Florida in the 1960s. Uh, unlike agamas, they probably got there by hitching a ride on cargo ships, although later released pets are probably contributing to the feral population. Whereas agamas are carnivorous, even the rare Miami blue butterfly, iguanas eat massive amounts of native Florida fo flora. Native Florida flora. Native Florida flora. Native Florida flora. So iguanas eat massive amounts of native Florida flora, including the knicker bean, which is a plant that serves as a host for the butterfly. So just last year, green iguanas were added to a list of reptiles that are prohibited pets in Florida. The law actually just went into effect last week uh, when I'm filming this, which means that iguana sales are, are no more in Florida. This next part doesn't actually have anything to do with invasive species, but I saw some cool iguana behavior when I was down in Florida. As I was walking along the canal, I saw a male iguana in my path. I approached and he bolted, but then I realized he had been standing next to what I initially thought was a dead iguana. Turns out that this male iguana was still breathing, so I plopped down my camera and scurried off to see if there was about to be a battle. Here's what happened. So this winner male, if he keeps besting his competition, will go on to mate with females in a large territory. Each one of those females can lay 20 to 70 eggs in a single burrow, so it's no surprise that green iguanas have completely overrun Florida. So the agama and the iguana, two invasive species in Florida, one new, one old, one carnivorous, the other herbivorous, one from all the way over in Africa, one from relatively close by in the Americas. But both of them threaten biodiversity in Florida, and both of them were scarily easy to find in Miami. So thank you very much for watching. If you like sciencey videos, please check out the other ones in this channel. I'm gonna go take a page out of the book of my new invasive turtle friends and go enjoy this nice spring day in New York City. Thanks very much for watching. What are some other region? Are some other reasons. What are some other region? Reasons. Regions. What are some other regions? Reasons. Why can't I say reasons? Nope. Come on, birdie. Get the shit together.